Hey, good morning guys. Do another day of working on Frank. So you can see I got a new uh, new line here. There's the old one. It's for the, the clutch. Line blew the other day. So, so you can see there's a master cylinder and the slaves down there. I'm just putting a new line in. Shouldn't be too hard. I got my tool here. Just gotta bend some of this. As you can see, I already started. So this is coming off the master. I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna put another bend right here going this way. So I don't know if you guys have ever used one of these, but we got the numbers on the side for the degrees. What you want to gonna want to do is put that in like this. Then it's gonna go around that part, and then this goes flat. And then when you're ready, you just bend that to the desired shape you need it at. All right, guys. So I got it snugly in there, as you can see. And I've just been bending it by hand. If you want to do sharp bends like this, it's better to use the the bender because you could kink it if you're using your hand. It's a bit like if you use like the point of your thumb or whatever as you bend it, it could kink. So short little bends like this, it's better to use the bender. But if you're gonna like put long bends in it like this and not too much of an angle, you can take your hand and slowly work it. It works too if you like hold it for a little bit and warm it up in your hands because the metal becomes more pliable. And then you can bend it a little easier. As you can see, it's getting pretty close. It is touching the body. We don't want to touch the body anywhere, so I'm gonna bend it a little more. I'm not going all the way down there, as you can see, into the mess. All right, guys, coming a little better now. As you can see, I got it coming down. Got to make sure you have enough clearance to clear your drive shaft here, or your sorry, your drive shaft, your uh, steering steering shaft. It gets pretty close. And on this one, I got a little bit of room, but on your car, it might be a little different. Then we bend around the back. Now, see those those tabs back there? I don't know if you're gonna see it, but there's a tab right here that was originally for these lines. There was one over there too, but I took it off, so you can see right right there where that bolt's sticking out. But if you want, you can reuse those. I highly recommend it. Then I put a little bend in there. It's going around the corner. You can see going around the corner there. Now it's just going down. And we have to get it from here. So we have to get this. It's still a little long. We have to get it right into there. So we're getting pretty close now. We just gotta put a bend in here. I probably have to bring this up pretty far to get that in. So I'm gonna have to put a 90 here and then a 90 from this way to that way. Alright guys, so I gotta take it back out of the truck. That's what it looks like so far. I had to put a, a 90 down here where it's at the, the bottom of the truck. It's where the firewall is. Sometimes you just don't have enough room underneath the truck to bend it, so you gotta take it back out and then put it back in again. I'm probably gonna have to shorten this piece a little bit just by putting a, like a zigzag bend into it because it, it sticks a little too far, but I'm gonna try and see what I can do. So yeah, here's what I ended up doing. I ended up putting a little M in the end. I might accentuate those a little more so it brings it a little tighter in. But as you can see, I'm going to pull that out just a little bit more and make it straight, but that's about it there. Alright guys, so I got that piece in there, have the line run, clipped into there, all the way down to the bottom. As you can see, I put that zigzag pattern in, it follows the body line down comes back and then zigs up and down and then goes into the side right there that's an easy way to shorten a uh, two bets too long rather than taking it back because I don't know if they'll take it back if you've already bent it but that's a good, neat little trick you can do you can even still pull on this a little more just be very careful because that's getting pretty much to the point where it's gonna kink all right guys got it almost done still tightening up the bolts it is good to mention that the master cylinder here, which is at the top, is made of aluminum. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's made of aluminum. So be careful when you're putting this bolt in and make sure it's perfectly straight because you could strip the teeth and then you have to get a whole new cylinder. That's what happened with the last one I had. 
I didn't end up putting it in straight. I even re-threaded it with a bolt, but it still didn't help. You have to get a new one of these. They're not too expensive. I think I paid $60 for this. But it is a pain in the butt, you know, just to go get it and change it. So it's better just to keep an eye on this. I know the slave down at the bottom is uh, cast, so it's a little harder to strip. But even with that, please be pretty careful because you don't want to be changing them. Parts you don't need to change because it just costs you money. Alright guys, so it's been another day now. And uh, I had to go up and get another hose. I got a shorter one this time coming off the master there. The reason I did that, not because the other one was too long, but I noticed that I, I kind of ran it down and then I put it back in the flex hose and I put it into the slave there. And I'll show you why. What happened was the piece that goes in here, this is my, my spare by the way, if you look at this, you see how the bolt goes in there like that and there's a certain amount of thread before it goes inside. This is a spare piece of brake line. I noticed that the end there, see how it's it's a lot shorter? Even though it's the same length on there, but the depth of this, if you put it in here, it'll bottom out before you can pressurize and it started leaking right in the, the inside there. Now what you can do is you get a longer thread like this, which might work. I don't know because I didn't try it. But what I suggest doing is getting some flex hose like the, the piece you've seen on the truck already, which originally comes with it, and doing it this way. This way it'll seal properly, and this is how it's supposed to be anyway. And then you got a little, you know, like a flex off the frame to the body kind of thing. And then, yeah, this works a lot better. It seems to be holding pressure. And as you can see, it's a little shorter too, so this is the flex hose I'm talking about. The slave cylinder there. But yeah, that's how you uh, do your clutch line. Alright guys, so uh, thanks for watching another episode of Anton Builds. If you liked the video, please uh, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, 